Joining us now to analyze the uproar surrounding BuzzFeed, CNN, Donald Trump, and that unsubstantiated Oppo research dossier, Aaron McPike, political commentator and a former reporter for Real Clear Politics. Kelly Riddell, deputy opinion editor of the Washington Times. And Juan Williams, a co host of The Five. Aaron did BuzzFeed's publication of these unproven rumors and allegations, which BuzzFeed admits are unproven could, and serious doubts about it. Did, did it hurt the reputation of BuzzFeed and, more importantly, of journalism? Oh, I think of journalism for sure. It makes all of our jobs a lot harder. You said it was unproven. At the top of the dossier, in their explanation, they said it's unverified and potentially unverifiable. There are some times as a reporter where you chase and chase and chase, but you're never going to nail it. And those days are tough, but you have to let it go. Kelly Riddell, did Donald Trump go too far, however, in calling BuzzFeed a failing pile of garbage? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, what they put out there was a pile of garbage. And Donald Trump has been, the press has been against Donald Trump since the day he entered this race. So he needs to defend himself and in doing so defends his supporters and the people who, who voted for him, who want him to come off as strong. In the end, Donald Trump wins this exchange because BuzzFeed did report unsubstantiated things. And then the next day it went out and it sold pile of garbage t-shirts on its website. So is it, is it a DNC you know, fundraiser or is it a media organization? Well, Williams, even many journalists have been highly critical of what BuzzFeed did because I think for a lot of people out there it's like, well, all you guys in the press, you don't like Trump and this is the kind of thing you did. But most, many news organizations had this information and did not publish it as Trump also noted at his presser. Yeah, in fact, he was highly praising, I think, of the New York Times in specific, Howie, for saying that they did not go for this information and when they uh, published something about it being given to not only President-elect Trump but to President Obama. They said it was unsubstantiated information that they could not verify. Let me just say though that Donald Trump conflated what BuzzFeed did with what CNN did. And I think that led to the very acerbic exchange with Jim Acosta of CNN. And it has stirred in the journalistic community a sense of, boy, we better stick together here as Donald Trump comes forward because you could easily divide CNN from BuzzFeed and say, I, you know, BuzzFeed, I can't defend, but CNN. And it just looks like the house of cards is coming apart on the press side of the equation. I asked Sean Spicer about that, and he seemed to feel like each news organization fed off the other. But there is an important distinction to be made in CNN, and you can criticize CNN's decision. I wasn't comfortable with it to bring up the uh, compromising information that Russia supposedly had. But uh, it didn't do what BuzzFeed did. It didn't put these raw allegations out there. All right, so BuzzFeed editor-in-chief Ben Smith doggedly defending his decision to go ahead uh, with the story. Here he is with NBC's Chuck Todd. I know this was not your intent. I've known you a long time. But you just published fake news. We just published a dossier. No, I think that's a really... Why is I that not a fair... Why is that an unfair description? I think people love to throw the term fake news around Trust to, me, to, I'm aware. to diminish anything of they don't course. like. But I think this was a real story about a real document that was really being passed around between the very top officials of this country. What do you make of Ben Smith's argument that the elites all knew about this? I mean, I didn't know about it, but apparently a lot of people did. And we're just sharing it with the masses. I think what Ben Smith did was make a business decision. Now, I know Ben Smith. I like him. I think he is a good journalist, and he gets a lot of information. But think about it this way. BuzzFeed has had quite a lot of access to President Obama. You may remember, thanks Obama, that meme came from a BuzzFeed video that they did of President Obama. We have some video we can put up of this right now. They had a friendly relationship, to be sure, with President Obama. In fact, when President Obama gave his farewell speech, there were a whole bunch of tweets from BuzzFeed political staffers saying, I can't stop crying, I'm so sad. Uh, looks like BuzzFeed has a certain point of view. Well, look, my point is more this. Their journalists have done a good job. And in fact, some top-notch organizations have actually taken some of their top-notch reporters. They've broken a lot of news over time. But it's clear that BuzzFeed is not going to get the same kind of access to President Trump. I think what Ben Smith is doing here, or what he did here, is say, we have access to the same kind of information that, say, CNN, Fox News, ABC, they all have. I think he was trying to show that he can play in the game. During yeah. the campaign. Oh, go ahead, Kelly. Well, no, I mean, I, if, if, if he had the same information on Hillary Clinton, you better believe he never would have ran with it. It was just because that it was I Donald Trump. That I don't agree with. I think he made a business decision here. Well, during the campaign, uh, there was a controversy about what BuzzFeed staffers were saying online, and Ben Smith told his staff in a memo that it is okay to call Trump a mendacious mm -hmm. racist because, said Ben Smith, that is a fact, not an opinion. Yeah. Uh, so how much do you think... 
political views influence this journalistic decision. 100 percent. Just like I said, if this was on, if this was about Hillary Clinton or about Bill Clinton, and there has been a lot of salacious rumors about him, it never would have been published without being authenticated, and every word of it would have had to been true. His team was lazy. They just printed the garbage that they got. Journalists are supposed to be thorough. They're supposed to be accurate. They go to source after source. If it's anonymous, they should have three anonymous sources to, to uphold the White House press protocol. There is a reputation that needs to be defended there. They absolutely threw the whole thing away. Well, I mean, again, what we come back to on BuzzFeed is this had been around. David Korn of Mother Jones had written something about this in October without going into the explicit details. And in all fairness, a lot of this stuff was also being handed to uh, federal investigators, uh, in some cases by Republicans. Uh, for further investigation, and it raises questions about at what point in defense of Ben Smith here do you say to the American people, there is this document. It affects your incoming president, but we're not going to tell you about it because it's unsubstantiated. So I you're think, more sympathetic to the decision. No, I'm not sympathetic yeah. to the decision because I think ultimately what you said is absolutely right. You, if you have it, the story, go with it. If you don't have the story, you can't go with it. But the, there is a story to the effect that it, the document existed. Let me get a brief answer from each of you. You all saw the exchange many times, I'm sure, between CNN's Jim Acosta interrupting Donald Trump, Sean Spicer kind of doubling down on the criticism, had some very harsh words. Uh, was Acosta out of line? No, he was fighting for a question. You know, I actually ran into Jim Acosta just the other day coming out of here, and he seemed to feel fine with it because you know, his point is that Trump has gone after the media again and again and again, and he just wanted to get a question after being attacked. He was fine, trying to get a question, but you have no constitutional right to be called on. Exactly, and after, after he was ignored after a couple of times, he should have let it go. I mean, this happened with President Barack Obama in the Rose Garden by a Daily Caller reporter, yeah. and the White House press at that time said it was a breach in etiquette and that they were shocked that this Daily Caller reporter would pursue that like well, this. But. Answer. Wow, what a press conference. That, I've never seen a press conference like that with a president or president elect. Someone described it as pandemonium, Howie. I think that's exactly right. Well, it's fine, in my view, for Acosta to shout out a couple of times, but yeah, to keep it going for 30 seconds did seem on the rude side.